All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to today's episode of the Indie Investor Pod. Uh, I'm Randy. I'll be the host today and really excited to have my guest on uh, coming out from California today, um, Asil Yurankar. How you doing, man? Doing well, man. I'm glad to be a part of this. Uh, thank you for bringing me on and uh, can't, wait to, can't wait to chat it up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if anyone doesn't know, uh, Asil is the unofficial reigning rookie of the year and in the Indianapolis uh, out of state investor Facebook group. I just had to throw that out there. So he uh, he's done some big things. Um, so he's, he's been investing in Indianapolis for, um, you know, a year to a little over a year now. And uh, really today, just wanted to like, uh, dive in and just see um, kind of what made him successful, uh, what what were his learning points, um, and kind of what are his strengths to, to allow him to do what he's doing from um, on the other side of the country. So, um, Asil, before we jump into all that, uh, why don't you give us your background, kind of what's your background in, and when did you decide to start investing in Indianapolis? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I've, I've always been an entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, my background is, well, for the last couple of years has been in a very, very uh, normal nine to five job in IT. Uh, but before that, you know, when I was younger, uh, right, right at a, around 18 years old, I kind of jumped into uh, the, the sales field and uh, within the fitness field, I was very, very into sales, um, tried to pursue some entrepreneurial pursuits after that. Um, and things didn't really, you know, come to fruition as early uh, at that time, because I was fairly, just fairly new to the, the, the world really. Um, so bec because of that, I, I started working a normal regular W2. I dove into technology because that was something that uh, me and my family were, you know, I, I have a lot of my family members were established in. So, um, you know, I had a fair amount of knowledge just starting out. Um, I got educated and got a couple of certifications um, so I got started in IT and I kind of pursued that for a couple of years with, uh, you know, in the back of my mind, I was, as I was doing that, I was thinking, you know, this is something that I've been wanting to do, but at the same time, uh, this is, um, this is also just uh, a way of me kind of stacking up my capital so I can pursue my entrepreneurial soul. So, um, that's what I've been doing for the last five years now. Um, I started out again, uh, at a very, very basic technology IT position. And now I work for the local government. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's basically how I got started. Really. That's, that's my day job. Um, and from there is where I kind of started to build my capital at this current position that I'm in. Mm -hmm. Um, and once I had enough funds to really, work with that's when i decided to kind of start looking into other other sorts of investments business opportunities and that's really how i fell into real estate awesome man and then um how'd you come across indianapolis as a place to, to kind of start um so this was really a very kind of calculated move as far as me because i started out searching for a bunch of different markets. I started out with the mentality of, you know, I don't want to be too far away from where I live. So I was sure. searching within California um, and started trying to kind of just researching um, real estate rental properties. And I, I figured out that, you know, rentals out of state made more sense, just like a whole bunch of people kind of realized at first. Um, and, you know, I, I was curious if there was even a way to invest in something like you know, a property that's thousands of miles away from me. It just seems right. so foreign to me. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, the, the more I read into it, the more I came to find out that, hey, this is a thing that people do and people do very well. Um, so, you know, I, I, I literally, I, I, once, I have a very obsessive personality. So once I figure out that there's a way to do this, I really, really just kind of dive in and obsess over it. So I, I, I started looking at population trends. I even contacted like the library of Congress to give me migration numbers. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was insane. So I, I had like this Excel sheet figuring out price to rent ratios of uh, all the major rental markets. So I, I looked at a bunch of stuff, but then I realized that Indianapolis is like the one hub that kind of falls into almost every category in a pretty decent uh, form. I guess it's, you're not gonna find the highest 
you know, price to rent ratios in the entire nation. Uh, but it, it kind of checks every mark that you need for a good rental property market. Uh, so it has, you know, every single major job sector that there is. And I think it's one of the only Midwestern cities uh, or areas that has every distinct, every big job sector uh, within the city. And, you know, the, the laws are very uh, business friendly. Mm -hmm. Landlord tenant laws are very uh, business friendly. Um, there's good population growth, employment growth. And uh, one of the biggest things that I think is very undersold is that it had a very thriving uh, investor community. So it had a, it had a yeah. investor and vendor community. So when, when mm -hmm. I started, the more I started looking up Indianapolis, I realized, hey, this is a lot easier to research than something like, I don't know, any, any other market in the Midwest, which is kind of like in the middle of nowhere. Right. And you're like, oh, the, the numbers work really well here, but how am I supposed to learn about this market? So there weren't as many resources for other places as there were for Indianapolis. Yeah. So. No, that's awesome, man. Yeah. I tell everyone that's starting to invest here all the time. Like, Hey, like our, our community here, super tight knit. So, you know, you're going to, you can ask around and someone will have either worked with that person or has heard of that person. And you can kind of get a good feel on, um, you know, who to work with, where to work um, and, and connect with the right vendors. So definitely feel you there. Um, yeah. so you decided to start investing in Indy, um, and, and start your journey. So how did you tell me about your, like your connections here? Um, like how did you get connected? Do you work with an agent? Do you kind of source your own deals? Um, what did you start out doing in the beginning? So in the very, very beginning, um, I was a little, uh, confused because I didn't know where to start, right? Like a lot of us newer investors, uh, we, we, we kind of get stuck on which part to really, uh, focus on. And so really what, how I got started was um, at my previous job, I used to work for a consultancy and one of our clients was a syndication firm. Okay. And I was very close with the acquisitions manager and I didn't, you know, I didn't know what they did. I didn't know what a syndication firm was. I didn't know what, you know, commercial apartment investing was. Um, so he kind of, I, I, one day I got curious and I asked him, Hey, what is it that you guys do? And uh, how do you do it? So he referred to me a book, um, which for the life of me, I can't remember the name of, but it was essentially a book on underwriting rental properties. Okay. Right. Uh, so he, and I kind of kept that, I wrote that down in, in my notes and I never looked at it until a year later when I'm in the spot that I am now, well, not now, but you know, at the spot where I was in my current, current job, uh, sorry, I think there's you're all good, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So it's basically, you know, I was at my current job and I had cash to invest a little bit of cash to invest. And I started looking into rental properties. I'm like, Hey, you know what? I do remember I have this book that someone referred to me. Uh, so, you know, uh, at that time I was like, focused on, okay, I have a little bit of capital. Uh, I know I want to buy a house in some sort of way. I don't know if it's going to be a rental property, let me look at this uh, resource and I read it and I figured out, oh my God, you can underwrite a property in almost every way and account for everything. And that just kind of started a spark. Uh, and it just, just kind of like really, really set a fire in my brain. So from there I started reading um, more books. So I, I, I read the, you know, bigger pockets book on long distance real estate investing. Mm -hmm. um, and those two kind of gave me the tools to really start, going out there and taking a look at these properties seriously. So now um, with, you know, I have a basic understanding of how I can underwrite properties and I have a basic understanding of what it takes to invest out of state uh, with just, two, just those two books. Um, so I started looking at Indianapolis um, and I started analyzing properties. And once I found something that, you know, looked like it was making sense. Of course, I didn't know anything at the time, but it just looked right. like it was making sense. I was <laughs> it's like, a, cheap, okay, it's a this, cheap house in Indiana. <laughs> yeah, it's a cheap, cheap 30 grand house in Indiana. It, there's, there's no way anything's wrong with it, right? Uh, so, you know, once I found that, I started calling up vendors. So I just started, you know, I, I, I this was before I even knew about bigger pockets. So I literally joined on Google and started pro calling up property managers, agents, uh, looking up who the most popular uh, vendors were. Mm -hmm. And so really that's how I got started as far as the whole building a team for out-of-state investing goes. So. And just guess, eventually just got connected with the right people, right? 
Yeah. So um, again, because Indianapolis had such a thriving investor community, mm-hmm. um, I, I, I started looking at it through bigger pockets and figure out, wow, there's a lot of people that invest here and they probably have a lot of valuable knowledge. Yeah. Um, so again, I just started connecting with other investors from Indianapolis and through them found vendors as well as uh, the vendors that I found on my own. Um, awesome, man. Um, so what, so when, what was the, what, what date was it when you got your first property or what, what month were you in uh, last? Was it, it was last year, right? Last year. Yeah. I, I'd say, I think last November. Last, you got your first property? Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't, I thought it was much sooner than that, man. Uh, yeah. Last November. Okay. Really. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, well, yeah, you've done a lot. So what do you, so kind of, what do your numbers look like? I know you kind of do a little bit of everything. So, um, I guess what, what's your main strategy that you focus on? Um, and then, cause I know you like to pick up properties. You like to have kind of a, you know, multiple extra strategies of what you could do. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, what, how many properties are you holding on to right now? Um, how many flips have you done? What's that look like? So, um, Right now I am in the middle of, I guess I'm on my 11th project now, picking okay. up my 12th, I think. Yeah, we just got into contract, I forgot. Congrats. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, yeah, so I in, initially I started out with the mentality of, you know, uh, I think a lot of people fall into real estate because it appeals to them as far as the passive income. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, you know, the, just the idea of passive income is very appealing and right. it's something a lot of people pursue for. So I started with the mentality of, oh, I want to burr and I want to build passive income. Um, But again, I started out with very, very little cash per se. Um, So I I figured out if I did try to do that, um, I would have to wait quite a while because my my, my cash was going to be stuck. Even if, you know, and and yeah, I know people say you can, you can burr and get that cash back, but that's a lot of, harder than it actually like it's a, it's a lot easier said than done it's yeah. very you still very have rare. to wait a little bit <laughs> like have it's, to not, wait. it's not like you yeah. get it right back out right when you're done with the project so exactly it's not you know there's a six month se- seasoning period for a lot of banks and i'm sure you could find one that doesn't offer that but again you got to jump through a bunch of loops and it's not always guaranteed that you're going to get 100 percent of your cash back you know you're right. still you're still depleting those funds slowly so i figured out you know what let's uh let's, let's flip instead and kind of grow this capital that I have here. And uh, once I have a decent amount where I can um, afford to, you know, have some of it on hold for a couple months, then it would make sense for me to start pursuing rental. So the first uh, I'd say, yeah. So the first I'd say out of 11, um, nine are, were, were put into flips. Uh, There's two rentals that I have currently. So yeah, it, it, initially I started out flipping and that's, that's really what kind of, that, that's really the only reason I was able to scale as, as, as I, I quote unquote fast as I did sure. um, because I was able to recycle those funds one from one flip, you know, I, I, it went okay. Now I had my, my funds back and then some, and now I could do another flip and then mm-hmm. by the time I, it came around to the second property and I sold that flip, I had enough funds to do two properties, two deals yeah. at once. Yeah. Um, and so once those went, now I, I could do maybe three or four at once. And at that point, I had eyes on me as far as, you know, just friends and family and people that were following my uh, journey. So now I had, you know, outside private financing uh, opportunities, which allowed me to scale even faster. Yeah. So. That's that's kind of like my next question as far as because you mentioned before you you were saving up your own money right um, mm-hmm. you know you're working and you finally had enough funds where you thought okay I can start to get into this so your first project was strictly your funds you didn't have to raise private money before you know jumping in oh no I did okay uh, well not okay. private money but I did leverage myself with a hard money lender and okay. then borrowed friend uh, borrowed funds from a friend's HELOC and I told them I'll pay him back. Uh, I think like 3% higher than his interest rate on his heat lock. Got you know, it. Cause okay. it was just kind of sitting there. So I, I heavily, heavily over leveraged myself on the first deal, which <laughs> for your audience, I, I don't recommend you do. Uh, but again, at that point I, I was very, very deep into the market and I, and I, I, I was, I think 
what gave me confidence was my due diligence process. Um, so I just, I, I picked a very safe deal for my first real deal. And so I knew that worst case scenario that I have a couple different exit strategies and there's very, you know, the risk is pretty, pretty mitigated. Yeah. Um, so that's why I felt comfortable, you know, leveraging myself to the gills at that point. So the first, I think I only started out with $15,000. Okay. So that's how much I had saved up from my W2. I had $15,000 in my pocket and my first project required like $30,000 out of pocket. And the rest was a hard money loan, which covered essentially the entire purchase and a little tiny bit of the, uh, a little bit of the renovation. Mm -hmm. And I, again, I, I partnered with a friend of mine to kind of bridge those funds. Okay. Yeah. I was just always curious. Um, you know, kind of, you, you kind of hear different ways people, you know, fund that first deal. Right. So, yeah. um, do you find it easier now to source private funds and, and people want to invest with you and put their money to yeah. work then? Yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's a hundred times. You got to get a couple projects under your belt, right? Yeah. So for, <laughs> I mean, for anyone that's, you know, really starting out, I think most important thing you can do is and I feel like this has been said enough, but it needs to be reiterated. Like mm -hmm. don't, you're not supposed to try and get a home run for your first deal. I figured out very early on the only, the reason why I did that deal and I knew it wasn't a home run. I knew it, I'm not going to get rich off of that deal, but I figured out very early on that in the real estate industry, the biggest thing that people value is action. People want to work with action takers. Everything, yeah. everyone in this industry is, working because they, they don't get a lot of a lot of people uh, i'd say most careers in this industry are not getting paid hourly you right. know you so so people's time is very very valuable and people don't want to waste their time with people where where they know that it's not going to be um you know they're not going to get anything out of it so if, if people know that you're about to action um you know then then it's a lot easier for people to trust you, find you deals, work with you and, and, and really put time into being on your team. And as an out-of-state investor, that's the number one thing you want. You want people to put in the effort for you because without your team, you're, you're quite literally nothing. You can't right. do anything. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so the first deal, you know, again, I focused on a very, very basic deal, but at that point I just had the mentality of, look, if I, if I break even on this property, I will be happy. Yeah. Um, because that's great. You know, I, I, because again, it shows me that I can take action. I can pull the trigger. I'll have one deal underneath my belt, even if it didn't go amazingly. Um, and luckily we ended up making a little bit of money. It wasn't, again, it, it wasn't a home run. It was a very, very tiny little base hit. Mm -hmm. uh, we only made like, again, four grand. So I almost, I almost broke even. Right. Uh, but it was a very safe property for anyone starting out. Like, again, you, you just, just pick a property that, you feel safe enough to where you know that even if it's a base hit, mm -hmm. you should be okay. So yeah. as long as your first deal, you know, don't, don't, don't go into the deep end and I don't know, buy a, f a full gut for your first property. Um, right. Something basic, something cosmetic is basically what I did and um, something that will allow you to take action and show your team that you really are about investing. Yeah. I mean, I think there's plenty of, of properties and areas around Indianapolis where if you just, if you're just patient to try, try to find like that, that deal where it's not going to be too much work, there's not too much that could go wrong. Um, mm -hmm. and just holding out to try to find it, it'll, it'll work out. Um, I see a lot of people that are, they, they want to do the HGTV flip and it's, and they like got the whole thing and it's not necessarily the right yeah. play for them at that time and their experience level. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, thanks for uh, reiterating that. So, yeah. Um, like, what would you say that your strengths are that you kind of rely on? You like, you you know what you're good at. Um, it could be like your systems, but um, tell me a little bit about what your your personal strengths that kind of make you a good investor out of state. Um, that's that's have, that's helped you out. I think it'll go back to what we talked about last. It's I think I believe my biggest strength to be diplomacy. Dipl okay. Did I say that right? Diplomacy, diplomacy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. I, I understand that, again, everyone is, this, is in this business for a reason. We're all trying to be successful to make money. So I approach every relationship uh, with any vendor, any person, any investor with the perspective of how can I add value to this person? How can I 
um, you know, what is this person good at and what are they trying to do and how can I help them get there um, in a very vague sense, right? Uh, if I see a contractor that's, that's really, really successful and, uh, you know, he um, has a good track record, then I'm going to try to see, okay, what is this guy's personality like and how can I best uh, communicate with him and work with him so that he wants to work with me? Yeah. You know, what is he looking for? What is he looking for in a client? Because right now, at, at least in this market, us investors are a dime a dozen. Everybody and their mother wants to invest in rental properties and flips and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, you really have to go out of your way and make it like, I don't know, you really got to bring some value to the table, whether it's uh, being easy to work with, whether it's, you know, I, I, I don't know. For me, it's just, I, I, I'm, I'm nice and respectful and I try to be nice and respectful to every single person I come across. And I, and I, wanna, I want them to know that I'm truly there to help you out in whatever it is that you're trying to do. Um, and I think that kind of comes back to me in, the, in a sense. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, definitely want to be the person that people want to work with. That's, that's kind of like what I, what I go for every day. So um, exactly. how about anything, any lessons learned, um, you know, since you've been, you started your journey here and, uh, anything you've come across that, you know, someone starting out or someone kind of in the same shoes as you could, uh, could take away from, um, any lessons learned or, or any red flags you've came across? Yeah. Um, I was at the, so I know a lot of people get stuck in analysis paralysis. Mm -hmm. I was at the other end. I was kind of like gung ho and I just kind of dove into it. And I, I was making offers on when I first started out, I, I barely had a team that, um, I knew would work and I was starting to make you know, offers on property that I had no business making offers on. So I think um, it's really important as a new investor uh, and it gets reiterated off to, to build your team and not only build your team, but make sure you connect with other investors as much as you can before you start building and vetting your team. Because, you know, you can read as many books you want, but you're not gonna, the, 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 the knowledge that you're going to gain from other investors that are in your market is second to none because you're any market that you're in is very very you know different from uh i would say uh even the next county over you know yeah um so i think it's very important for anyone new to start connecting with other investors i'd say that's the biggest thing start connecting with other investors see how you can help them um find out ways to network with other investors and find out what's worked for them, what hasn't worked for them. And based off of that, then I think you have to be very, very actionable about building a team that's vetted and uh, take action based off of that. You know, I think due diligence is very, very important for a new investor. And that's something that I kind of uh, overlooked. I was kind of, I was kind of winging it at first and that kind of burnt me because again, I was throwing, Pro offers on properties I had no uh, no uh, business store offers on and because of that <laughs> I was kind of learning along the way uh, as you know because I was learning that oh, may, oh wait I didn't know about this being a problem in Indianapolis I didn't know that this property is you know, there's the, the first very pro the very first property I, I, I threw an offer on uh, I think like the entire floor was just like sagging and it needed to be torn down. I found it off as some Craigslist ad. Yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't until, you know, I found an agent to go out there and look at it. She was like, this, this, you need, we need to, you know, follow, uh, we need to send a mutual lease. This thing needs to be torn down. Um, and then from there, I started like, you know, connecting with property managers and then they started giving me some tips and then I started connecting with investors and they started giving me some tips. So the path I went on wasn't very, um, wasn't, uh, very uh, trying to find the word structured, right? I, I think I, I didn't I didn't build my foundation before I dove in. I think it's very important for people to build their foundation, connect with investors, find a team, and then and then dive in. Yeah. Um, so the other part being, once you have that foundation, don't just kick tires. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right? Uh, once you have the people that you trust, um, you you got to take action. So I'd say that's probably the biggest, biggest thing. Yeah, no, that's great. Great advice there. Um, and then I know you started looking at properties and, um, you know, making offers. And I think you even bought some before you even visited Indy the first time, right? Yeah. So talk, talk to me about how, 
I guess eye opening it was to actually see the city, um, you know, versus through photos and videos <laughs> that you see from your vendors. I mean, how much of a difference did that make for you and how much confidence did it, did it build moving forward now that you've, you've driven the streets, you know, the neighborhoods better than you yeah. did. I mean, you're, everyone's still learning, but man, you've, you've kind of, you've smelled the air, you've been here. Like how much did that help you? Uh, it helped a lot. It helped a lot because I found out some areas that I thought were, you know, nicer, which really weren't. And I, I found some areas where I would never think about, you know, buying where I would now buy. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, although, well, I guess um, because I'd say my, I had a good enough team and I good, had a good enough understanding to other investors of what's where, what's not where. And then uh, I think I, I had an understanding of Indianapolis uh, beforehand, as far as the major streets that are, you know, good uh, streets, areas that are good to invest in what my, what my, what, for what I'm looking for, but going there kind of just expanded that knowledge. Um, I, I, I'm, I don't want to, say that it's impossible to uh, learn about a market without being there. It's definitely possible, but I think being there, looking at it, driving around and meeting those people in person definitely accelerates that. Yeah. Um, I think it was a very good uh, test for me because I had, I, I honestly purposely did not visit Indy for uh, a while because I wanted to make sure that my systems were so strong that I never have like that, that, that I didn't necessarily have to visit v Indy in order to do a deal. And so after I did my first couple that kind of proved that to myself. Um, but then again, after I did visit Indy, it just kind of like blew up my knowledge of it. You know, it, it accelerated yeah. it quite a bit. So yeah, no, I you can. It's definitely spots of indie. You hear everyone like, "Hey, it's kind of street by street, block by block." There, even house Super. by house. And um, as much as you explain that to someone, they don't really get it until the, they see it, right? They see it in person, like, "Oh, that's what they meant." Because they're like, "How could this house be three hundred and then down the street's only fifty thousand dollars?" Yeah. Well, I mean, I could tell you, but you just you got to see it. You got to see what's going on and drive. The I, I have to say, your guys' podcast helped me out so much. <laughs> When you did your neighborhood series, you know, and I highly recommend everybody to go back and watch. If you're investing in Indianapolis, the 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 series that Simple Wholesaling does on the indie neighborhoods is a absolute must because there are some people in there that are just veterans of the game that are literally describing to you street by street which areas are good, which areas are not, and if you know they, I think there's times they even said that oh, if you go two streets over, you're just you don't want to invest there. Right. <laughs> so they, they get very specific at times. Um, so that was very helpful. So thank you for that. Yeah. I appreciate the shout out. We'll, we'll still do more stuff like that. Cause it's always changing. Um, so, Hey man, we're, we're towards the end of the show. Um, is there anything else you wanted to share, um, you know, regarding your experience here, any, any last tips of advice? Yeah. I mean, so again, for anyone that's watching, I started out, it, it, so I, I'm at a place where I don't consider myself a crazily experienced like some of my other investor colleagues, but I'm in the sweet spot of where, um, you know, I still feel fairly new, but I'm not new enough to not have any value to add. So I would say because with, with that perspective, I can confidently tell anyone that is newer that it's, it's not impossible. You just, you know, you, you should really, I, I started out with $15,000 in cash. And if, if, if you're in a similar situation where this is something that you're really wanting to pursue, um, take those first steps and, you know, gather your resources, talk to other investors and formulate a actionable plan on how you're going to get to your first rental or your first offer. I think, I think some, most people wait way too long before doing that. I think it should take, uh, uh, anywhere from 14 to 13 days. I was talking to my uh, investor colleague, his name, Ernesto, you probably know him. And we were all kind of talking about, about how, you know, I think uh, really for anyone that's serious about this should be able to get uh, a good understanding of the market within anywhere from 14 to 30, uh, 30 days, as long as they're uh, following the right steps, connecting with other investors, uh, vetting your vendors and learning learning the ropes through other people that are more successful. So uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, it, it's, it's very, very possible for really anyone 
Um, of course, with the caveat being, you, you obviously have to have a little bit of cash. You can't, you can't just invest with $5. Right. <laughs> um, but as long as, as long as you're somewhere near that, um, it's, it's very doable. Um, and it's very rewarding. And it, it can be, it can definitely be a roller coaster at times, but at the end of the day, real estate is very, very forgiving over time. And, um, you know, the journey is a hundred, hundred percent worth it. Awesome, man. Awesome stuff. Um, uh, again, thanks for hopping on today. Um, really excited to see your growth here in Indy. And uh, with that, that's the end of today's episode. So we'll see you guys on the next show. Appreciate it, Randy. Take care, guys.